Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Customers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Hanging out with the big Joe Herd right here. Got a baby laying down over here. Yes, the only baby we have here at the Ponderosa right now. I should be expecting, I think, one or two more. Um, but uh, got three babies total now at uh, Mom and Kevin's place at the Dunbar Herd. Anytime you're having a red dog, then you don't know when you're going to have them. That's exciting. You just never know. You could come out here and you could have a new red dog. So that's just how these animals are. So we're expecting more any day. A couple of things I want to talk to you about today. One, you've probably noticed in some of my videos, got this big blue bulk feeder. I want to talk to you about that. Uh, it is new to the Ponderosa and new to our ranch. I'm going to tell you how the process of that goes. Um, getting feed for that and who it's actually for. The other thing is, you guys may or may not have seen this, but recently there was a young girl that was actually hurt very seriously at Yellowstone National Park. I feel like that I have to say something about that. I think that's important. Hey guys, now we're up here actually at the barn, as you can see here. Um, so if you hear a lot of the traffic noise, this is a very popular road cars may come by so so what we have here is the a new 20 foot skid bunk feeder this uh, feeder is from Oklahoma pride it's based out of Chickasha Oklahoma and you know ever since we've been into uh, raising bison or just growing up in Oklahoma you I've been used to seeing this blue color of a feeder these have become more popular since I've been in the bison industry a lot of them now come with axles uh, depending on how big they are you can get them they're also known as uh, feed buggies there's lots of different technical names that these have but this is a 20 foot bunk feeder uh, it's just on skids so uh, the reason it's on skids is you're not moving it very far i'm not traveling from pasture to pasture it's going to stay relatively close to the barn now i may move it in a pasture but it's not going to go very far so this is what is called skids right here and you pull it with this angle so you can wrap your chain whatever it is you can wrap it around here on this heavy duty angle iron on this uh, two and seven eighths pipe right here and you can pull it with your tractor uh, skid steer in our case but I love this feeder it is solid it is got this rain guard here they actually make an extended rain guard We've had a lot of rain already this spring and I've been very happy with the coverage and even rain coming in sideways. Um, it's done a good job of keeping the rain out of the actual bunk. Uh, the bison have figured out how to eat it correctly because you can see here uh, the horns have been rubbing right here on the panels. They have these manual slides on them here. You can adjust the depth on the slides and um, this is how basically this works on these um, feeders is uh, it's a gravity flow so as the bison eat and it comes out uh, it'll just naturally fall right here uh, that's kind of how it goes on both ends it has a climbing steps here it has a turn auger to kind of break up the feed in there as soon as i got the bulk feeder i had some feed delivered for the first time here at the ponderosa uh, the place where we get our feed from is only like 10 minutes uh, away, uh, which is super convenient and it's safer. Uh, obviously, if I had one on wheels, I'd probably still do the same thing. I'd have them deliver it because these things get so heavy once that feed gets in there. Um, and so what I started off with, I got 10,000 pounds of feed in here of our four-way blend mix that we feed all of our young bison just to kind of get them going. So here's the process of getting bulk feed. Okay. Once the trailer pulls up, um, I get on top, open up the bins. We only actually used uh, two of the bins this time. Depending on what type of feed you have, you really spread it out.
started filling it up. What I did quickly before he actually filled it up is I went through and adjusted all of the openings to the same height uh, because once you start putting, once the speed starts coming in, a lot of that weight really gets down to this V-shaped um, frame. When all that weight and that feed starts filling up, it really compresses on these sliding openers. It's much harder to adjust your openers. It's a, a lot harder to adjust that opening. Uh, depends on how much volume of feed you want out as the animals consume feed. But it's better to go ahead and open them now while you can uh, before the weight starts to come in. Really after the feed is delivered, you shut the bins back, lock them down, and now it's time to pull it to wherever you're going. It took me a minute to really try to figure out the skid steer. You typically don't pull with the skid steer, but in this case, I had to learn how to pull it. I eventually got it to where I wanted it. I left it close to where the bison could come in the corral, get fresh water, uh, they could get the free choice feed and go out and graze in the pasture. So where I put this is right here in our corral. What group has access to this is the uh, 21 yearlings. It's the South Dakota bison and the wolverine bison that we have. So we've got hoss and 20 yearling heifers in that group that have access to this. And uh, this is just something that we do. This is a great tool for to use during your weaning season, which is when the bison calves are about six or seven months old, you know, start weaning them, you take them off mama, and then you gotta put them somewhere where they can't get back to mama. And this is a good time to put them on feed and whatnot. We kind of got this towards the end of that and we were able to use it a little bit during that process, just as we were about to uh, let the, um, these yearlings out, which you probably just saw. And if you haven't, we just let these yearlings out um, here recently. But they have access to this and this just gives them a little bit of extra something. They've got plenty of grass right now which is great, but uh, they'll come up and graze on this free choice feed here every now and then, and, uh, they, and that just helps them uh, get all that extra nutrients for them. So if you are interested in a uh, bulk feeder, they have uh, feed buggies, they've got these bulk feeders, they've got them in skid form, and then they have them in wheel form. Hey guys, if you are interested, you can check out Oklahoma Pride website. I got the link in my description. Yeah, there is the number right there for you. Uh, if you are got any interest in a bulk feeder, it doesn't matter if you're feeding sheep, goats, cattle, bison. In this case, these bulk feeders will do it and they build to those animals. So you can uh, reach out to me if you're interested or you can call that number directly or you can uh, check them out online at Oklahoma Pride. And uh, it's a unique blue color, you can't miss it. All right, we're gonna go out in the pasture now. I gotta do a little work with the skid steer while I'm out there. We're gonna go check the big Joe herd and see how they're doing. Where are they going? Okay. But you're staying? All right. Come on, dogs. You guys may or may not have seen this, but recently there was a young girl that was actually hurt very seriously at Yellowstone National Park. I feel like that I have to say something about that. I think that's important as it's the very busy time of the summer. People are traveling, obviously going to national parks and visiting uh, this majestic animal. I'm lucky because I get to raise this animal and I get to be around them every day. There we go. The baby finally came out. Speaking of the baby, so there's a couple of reasons why this possibly happened. I wasn't there. I've read just as much as you have on what uh, the National Park Service has posted and what the Yellowstone National Park Service has posted. And this is what I know. It, it's the same thing that happens almost every year. And, and these people, uh, you guys that are traveling and that have been to Yellowstone, which I haven't even been there. I've been to Custer State Park, 
but I've never been to Yellowstone and I know it's kind of the same situation which can happen at Custer too as well. There's two things that cause these typical accidents. One of the reasons I know uh, why bison are dangerous in the summertime. There's two things that are going on. One, right now, these mamas are having babies. As you can see, there's a little red dog over here and I'm keeping my distance. I know that this time of the year, especially with certain cows, even at the Dunbar herd, I have to keep, I have to watch out what I'm doing because mother nature takes over and they are very protective of their young, which they should be. They're just protecting their young ones, just like any other animal in the wild should be. And even though mine spend more time around people and, and me, uh, they still protect their young and they can be very aggressive. During the heaviest traveled times of the year, which is in the summer, uh, you guys and, and all these people are going out to visit these national parks and whatnot, which is awesome, which I love that. You get to go out and see these animals actually really up close. So what comes shortly after the red dogs are on the ground and getting older is it's breeding season. These mamas have to turn around in a month or two and they become in heat, uh, which gets these bulls going, uh, which gets bulls being aggressive. And that's the other time that you start to see incidents with people is they're getting too close out there and those bulls are being protective. Uh, they're fighting for dominance. Some of the young ones are competing with the older uh, bulls and that creates um, some very uh, unpredictable situations with these animals. And those bulls are going around and there's certain groups of females that they're protecting. There may be a certain a specific female that's in heat that they're after and that they're protecting and so there's a lot going on out there um, it, not only if it's the mamas protecting their calves you've got the bulls out there um, trying to breed the females and uh, what will happen is those dominant bulls will breed as many as they can and then the young ones will be kind of uh, shoved to the side and they will breed as well they'll breed the rest of the ones that the dominant bull doesn't um, that's kind of the mainstream thing that happens, but um, so people When you go to visit these national parks I Know you want to get up close to them. I know some of you actually may see me get up close to them There's a couple of things that all that always have one. There's always I'm close to something um, whether I'm in a corral or a pen I am close to something if I'm out in the pasture I'm either with the ATV, I'm either have the skid steer with me, or I'm close to my truck. I am never just out in the open. I never expose myself out in the open. And a lot of people do that. They want to get up close, they want to get that selfie. Um, right now, I'm probably 20 yards from these yearlings. And um, that's probably too close to nature. I know that they're very harmless, but you don't know that and neither do a lot of these people, these visitors, going to these national parks. I'm about uh, 30 or 40 yards from that red dog and the mama. That's probably too close in, uh, in Yellowstone. So guys, I know you see me get up close to mine. They're used to me. They are, have adapted to, to us, and I have adapted to them as well. And uh, mine are very nice because we spend a lot of time with them. We run them through a squeeze chute twice a year. Uh, Yellowstone and places like that, they don't always do that. And so they're not handled. Um, and those bison are bigger than mine. And uh, they can be more aggressive than mine. Um, so guys, I just really ask that you please be careful. Um, I wouldn't even get out of your vehicle. And, and, and never ever get this close to a bison. Never approach a bison where you have nothing to hide from, get under, grab onto, get on top of, especially don't do that. And unfortunately, people are getting injured and yes, I can get hurt and I know that. And um, the only times that I ever put myself in, in, in uh, scary situations is when we work the bison. And um, I still need to be careful whenever I do work the bison and, and where I get. And the older I'm getting and the more I work around them, I kinda, Pay attention to those things and getting better about it and I promise my wife stays on me about it and doesn't let me forget and reminds me so they are beautiful animals and we're very lucky to have them 
So when you go to those parks, when you go to Teddy Roosevelt National Park, when you go to the Wichita Mountains, which is in Oklahoma, when you go to Custer State Park and you go to Yellowstone, please don't get out of your car and approach these animals. Big Joe is close to 2,000 pounds. Thousand, these cows are about 1,000 or 1,100 pounds and they're way faster than you. Guys, these animals are athletes. They are, that's what I'll always refer to them as. They're athletes. They're so athletic, they're fast, they're aggressive, and they can get up and go like a, like a race car. They're way faster than we can. So don't think that you can outrun them because you can't, and they're gonna get there to you before you can even blink. And uh, I know this because I've seen it, and I, I've been in these situations, I've seen what these animals can do. So please, guys, and, and I know I may be speaking, and I hope I'm speaking for other bison producers out there, that may not be on social media, um, but um, we as bison producers have seen what these animals can do. We've seen how aggressive they are. We've seen how fast they are. Don't go and put yourself in a bad situation. Think about others. Think about your surroundings and what you're doing uh, before you make that decision because you control your situation. You don't control what they do. You can control getting yourself out of the car and walking up there to get that selfie. I've got the skid steer right here behind me. I'm 10 feet from it. Um, I always have somewhere where I can go, always moving around. If you watch me consistently, you know that I'm always turning and looking back. Plus, I can see them here in my camera too as well. I hope I haven't scared you guys, um, but I just want you to know and I express my uh, condolences to the families that have been affected by this uh, and the visitors that saw what happened and um, I hope that you guys understand a little bit more about um, you know we love these animals and care about them but your life is more important and we don't want anybody to get hurt I hope that um, my videos help that and I hope me talking to you about it uh, helps visitors out there to be aware of these animals they're a beautiful animal and we love them and care about them uh, but they can hurt you but they can hurt you um, if you put yourself in a situation. Leave us a comment. Let me know what you think, guys. I uh, really express my feelings towards this, and I, uh, I hope you have the same. And uh, if you know people out there are going to Yellowstone and visiting those places, let them know to be careful and be safe. Do not get out of your vehicle and approach these animals. Thank you, guys. See you soon.